us? Willie? Yeah, can you know. All right. Whenever you're ready. Okay. I'd like to get started. Then, uh, thanks for joining us, Daniel Berger, here at the John Deere Classic 20.1. Um, this is your third start here, Daniel. Um, 2017, you finished tied for fifth, and 2019, you finished tied for 33rd. What did you like about coming back to the John Deere Classic, and how does TPC John Deere feel uh, your game? Well, you know, I, I had some success the first time I came here. I had a chance to win. Um, played well the first three days and just didn't have it on Sunday. But, uh, you know, I think it's a good tune-up event for me before the Open Championship. I know it doesn't play the same as, obviously, an Open Championship would play. But uh, I think uh, it, it, can, it can give you a lot of confidence. Um, it's not overly difficult, and, and um, you, you have a lot of birdie opportunities. So um, I just look at it as a kind of a stress-free week and uh, just try to play my best golf and give myself a chance to win and, and look forward to, you know, obviously next week as well. You've kind of answered the question I was going to ask next about um, you know, playing the week before a major championship and the attraction of playing this week and, and then traveling over to the Open. And some guys like to do that, other guys like to be here in advance. Um, what does this um, suggest to you uh, to play here before going over? You know, I've, I've always wondered, you know, what guys like to do, you know, in terms of playing before majors, not playing before majors. You know, it's pretty early in my career. So, you know, I've tested playing and not playing. and. When I look at the record of you know how I've played leading up to a major, I think I've had two wins and and uh, a couple top fives and a bunch of chances to win. So I always feel like you know, as much as it's uh, an event to kind of get ready for next week, I, I've actually played really well in, in the lead up events to majors. So um, you know it's just kind of stress free and and then sometimes that leads into really good golf. So um, I'm just excited to you know get out there and uh, and see how my game is and 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 work on anything I need to work on leading up to next week and and uh, just really enjoy being here in Iowa, so that's why I come. Great. We'd like to remind the media on the call that uh, if you have a question, just please type your name into the chat, and uh, we'll call on you and take a question for Daniel. Um, while we're waiting for that, um, your season this week has been really strong. You've had six top tens, including a victory at um, at and Pebble Beach. But, but, but you've just taken a couple of weeks off. What, what do you do like when you have a season like this you know, to, to, to kind of get your um, schedule in place and taking two weeks off at this point in the season? Yeah, you know, I think I've looked at uh, the players that have had the most success, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the playoffs and having a chance to win the Tour Championship, and it looks like they've always played the best kind of at that final peak of the season. And so I've really tried to work my schedule around being freshest uh, toward the end of the year. And so that's why I haven't played a ton of golf, you know, in the last three or four months. Um, I think I've played maybe 16 events this year, which when you look at some of the other guys, they're in the you know low 20s. And, and I just think that's going to benefit me more at the end of the season when you know the big event, well, not the big events, but they're all big events. But you know when I feel like those events mean the most and when you can move up the FedEx Cup uh, very quickly. Terrific. OK, we'll, uh, we'll turn to the questions and we'll go to Corey Cooklet from um, News Eye. Go ahead, Corey. Yeah, Daniel, how does this? fit into your schedule obviously the week before man you kind of touched on a little bit but you've played here a few times you've had success um how does it fit into your schedule as far as getting ready when you're putting that schedule ready for the year well i think just the the way that the u.s open fell this year uh that was three weeks ago in in uh, california you know it's tough for me i'm not uh the best at uh jet lag and and, and stuff like that so i just felt like playing the U.S. Open and then coming home, taking a, a couple weeks off, getting some rest, and then, uh, you know, obviously playing one week to kind of get ready for, for next week was, was something that I've, uh, you know, looked at in my schedule and thought it would be best. And in years past, I haven't done it, and sometimes I have. And, um, you know, I just felt like uh, it, it was a good week to, to, to play, and, and that's why I added it kind of later in, in the schedule. What has been some of your keys to your success this year? What are, you, what are you doing well that you really hope you can continue to do this week and then into the Open next week? You know, I've putted the ball really well. Um, I think this is maybe statistically the best season I've had in terms of, like, footage of putts hold, which I think uh, is, a, is an indicator of, of the work that I've put in, you know, in the off season and last year. And um, I th this is obviously going to be a course where, you know, if the weather you know stays the way it is, the scores are going to be low, and you're going to have to make birdies and essentially have to make a ton of putts. So um, you know, I always think that that's uh, 
it's a good thing to, to come to a course the week before major that you know is going to be very challenging and, and feel a little bit less stress, not in terms of um, being in contention, but just the golf course isn't as challenging off the tee and um, you know you can get into a little bit of a rhythm if you hit if you hit some good tee shots so um, for me it's just about uh, getting ready for next week and, and coming to a place that I really enjoy. Uh, last one I have for you then is just kind of talk about um, getting ready for next week and just the, the preparation of things you have to do to go from an area where you can fly the ball a little bit higher to where next week you're going to have to have a little bit lower ball flight and just kind of focusing on those differences a little bit. Yeah, obviously, you know, next week being um, a link style golf course, there's going to be a lot more uh, flighted golf shots. And, and here, you know, it's a little bit different with the greens being softer. You can fly things a little bit higher, less wind. But, um, you know, I'm typically a lower flighted golf ball player, so it's not much of an adjustment for me. If anything, it's tougher for me to hit the ball higher in the air. Um, but like I said, I've played, I've played well here before, and um, I think the golf course suits me very well. And I'm excited to play, you know, a course that I enjoy coming to, you know, not every golf course that we play when you get up to the tee, you know, you're really in love with it, but I feel like this place sets up nicely for me. Well, I think it, a lot of it has to do with natural shot shape. You know, I'm a cutter of the golf ball, so you look at some of the more challenging tee shots, 18, it's a cut. Um, so I just feel like those those challenging holes suit my eye. And, uh, and you know, some courses are like that, some courses aren't. But, uh, you know, this one just happens to have, you know, a few cut shots on the holes that are more challenging. Um, you look at the drivable par four, I think it's uh, maybe 14. You know, there's another cut cut shot. So um, just a, a lot of those more challenging tee shots seem to fit my eye, and, and, and that's why, you know, I feel good off the tee here. Yeah, there's been a variety of, <clears throat> of winners here, of players who shape the ball different. Uh, uh, guys who hit the ball long. Um, you know, Zach's had a lot of success here. Um, how, does, how does this course work for seemingly everybody in, uh, in some, some ways? Well, I think it has to do with the guy that that uh, putts the best. To be honest, you know, you look at the, you know, historical scoring here. It's pretty low, um, and and that translates into just making birdies. And you know, you're not going to hit it to three feet on every hole. You have to hold footage of putts. And um, you know, obviously Zach's a great putter. Steve's a great putter. You know, you look at the guys that have won recently or throughout the history of the event. They're all great putters. So um, I think that's going to be probably the biggest category of of uh, relationship to you know how they finish and then also wedge play you know you look at the guys that have won here and they're all also really good wedge players you know so I think those are the two main keys to this golf course you know wedging it well and, and putting it well. All that said uh, have you had uh, what's the golf course look like right now? How's the play? Yeah I mean the golf course is great right now um, you know the greens aren't very soft which you know typically they can be with the heat and you know they have to keep them at a certain, you know, level of speed or else, you know, they, they just, they can't handle the heat. But, um, you know, hopefully we don't get any rain in the forecast and, and by late Sunday it firms up a little bit and becomes pretty challenging. And, you know, hopefully I'm there uh, with a chance to win. Thank you, Dan. Yep. Can we, uh, I'm not sure if we have any questions right now. I'll just uh, ask you one, Daniel. Uh, You've been in three playoffs on the PGA Tour. Most recently, uh, the Charles Schwab Challenge, which you won. Uh, coincidentally, that was the first event back after a um, break from COVID. Um, just curious if you watched the last couple of weeks with the eight-hole playoff at Travelers and the five-hole playoff at um, Rocket Mortgage last week, and what your thoughts are on those. Yeah, I mean, listen, those. Uh, it's brutal when you have to play, you know, an extra eight holes after you know a 72-hole event. But uh, obviously, they, you know, both. Both guys in both playoffs were playing some great golf, and I saw some of the shots that they hit. It's just you know they hit some incredible golf shots. But uh, I always think when you get it, I mean when you get into those playoffs, it's it's more about kind of uh, taking it now than kind of being conservative and 
you know, trying to let your opponent make a mistake. I think uh, that's kind of what I learned from my previous two, you know, playoff experiences is you need to go out there and try to birdie that first hole. And, and if it, you know, goes to the second hole, you need to try to birdie that second hole. It's less about, you know, being conservative and letting the other guy make a mistake. That's good comments that work for you. Um, we'll go to a question from Tom Johnston uh, for dispatch. Go ahead, Tom. Good morning, Daniel. Hey, just a question regarding your schedule. You haven't been here very often. Um, what was the impetus to get here this year? Yeah, I mean, I don't think, uh, you know, there's any particular reasoning. I, I just kind of, you know, I had taken a little bit of time off and I wanted to, to get an event in under under my belt before heading over to uh, to the Open Championship. And, and obviously, you know, they make it really easy for us over here at the John Deere. They provide the charter over there to the Open Championship, which just makes life a lot easier. So that was another factor as well. But, um, you know, I like I said, I've played here before and I've had success. And, um, you know, I like the golf course. I like the area. And I just thought I'd give it another shot and come back and um, you know, I, I really do enjoy being here. So that was really the reason why I came this year. Follow up on that. Talk about your season and the success you've had uh, making cuts, being in contention. Has, has something changed in your game to get you up there that consistently? Or has it just been a natural progression? Yeah, you know, my goal has always been to, you know, just get a little bit better every year. And, you know, with uh, with that one year, uh, I think it was 2019, where I played a little bit injured. You know, obviously I didn't have the greatest year, but, you know, other than that, I've, you know, throughout my career shown that I've been a top player, you know, a consistent top 50 player in the world. I, I've made, you know, five or six tour championships in my first seven years. So um, I think it's just about getting a little bit better every year. and. And uh, you know, started working with a new golf coach two years ago, Cameron McCormick, who I think has helped take me to that next level. And um, I just think every aspect of my game has gotten a little bit better, and, and that's why I'm seeing more consistent results and, and a little bit better play than you know in the years past. Thank you. All right, I think uh, oh, we've got one more from Corey. If uh, we're ready for Corey, go ahead. Yeah, Dan, you're the highest ranked golfer in the field this week. Uh, pressure or no pressure going into an event where you're the highest ranked golfer? I think, it, you know, anybody can win. That's uh, that's the beauty of the game of golf. And um, I definitely feel confident that uh, if I play my game, I'll have a chance to win on Sunday. But uh, like I said, I mean, it's so tough, you know, to go out there and, and say that, you know, I'm going to go win that golf tournament. But if I prepare the way that, you know, I've been preparing and I, and I and I play the way I'm capable of playing, then I feel very good about my chances. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, All set. Sorry, Daniel, we just got one more from Tom Johnson to follow up and then we'll get up. In that same regard, Daniel, how tough is it to win out here on tour now with all of the talent that's out here? Yeah, I mean, you look at, uh, you know, some of the guys that have the best winning percentages and, and they're at like five or 10%. So uh, it's, it's very tough to win. Um, but uh, you know that's what we strive for. That's what we work so hard for. And, and when, when you get yourself in those positions to to win, you know that's uh, that's what makes it worthwhile for all those hours of practice. Awesome. Thank you. Good to go. All right, Daniel. Hey, thanks a lot. Yep. A lot of great Thank you. And, uh, have a great week this week at the John Deere Classic. Good luck.